Hey, Tim Sykes here. Happy Monday. I hope you had a good weekend, a safe weekend. Uh, wanted to go over the latest plays and my recent trades. Um, it's always good to review. You know, you really have to look at this um, as a business and it's, you know, what can you do on every trade and every single day to do better than you did in the past? Um, it's a process. So if by the end of this video, you understand that, leave a comment underneath this video saying it is a process. Don't even say it's a process because that would just be abbreviating it. You have to understand that this is gonna be a long process. So type out, it is a process, four words. Um, ALYI is one of the stocks I've been buying recently. Um, started buying it right in here uh, on the breakout in the 0.005s. Um, you know, disclaimer, I'm not great with ultra low price stocks like trading at around a penny or under a penny um, because you know, you're trying to go for like a third of a penny or a quarter of a penny profits. It's really tough. I wish this were 10 times or 100 times the price, but it's not. Um, and this, uh, they make uh, an electric uh, motorcycle. So they got funding for it. It's a hot sector. I was buying it. I totally underestimated it. Um, I bought it a few times, but I, you know, really my best trade was actually buying it for this late day run up. Failed to do much. I got out right at the open. It didn't do much on Friday. Today, back at it again because um, all the electric vehicle stocks are surging. Um, again, I sold uh, too soon, okay? Um, I've made roughly two grand before I filmed this uh, today on Monday, um, which is, you know, one of my, I guess, worst days of the month. On a normal month, I mean, this would be like a, a decent or even above average day. Um, but lately, you know, this month is just insane. Um, like 270,000 in profits for the month now. All will be donated to charity because I want you to understand uh, that I'm here to teach you the process. So no one trade matters. No one stock matters. Expect the worst out of all these companies. Um, but I was pretty dead on with, um, you know, my thesis that these electric car vehicle makers um, are going to surge. SOLO was my biggest profit uh, on the day. And this one was running. And I totally underestimated this one, too. Um, I sold it, you know, on the initial spike around 215-ish. It got all the way up to 240-ish. Um, you know, all of these stocks are a little choppier than I like, okay? So like we all have our, our favorites. WKHS, which makes the electric truck. Remember, I was buying this. Let me just show you where I was buying this. When they first had positive news about the electric truck, right here, right here. This is only a seven-day chart. I was buying it here in the 450s. And I was actually a little disappointed. I got a, a better uh, profit buying it on the dip in the 430s um, after the news. And it didn't really move much. After hours, it spiked a dollar a share. The next day, it didn't move much. And only now, like this should help you understand, like I'm making a few thousand dollars on pretty much all of these trades. And on plays like WKHS, I mean, you had what? One, two, three, four, five, six trading days before the biggest spiking before you know wall street wakes up this is the inefficiency that uh, exists with penny stocks and you know it doesn't happen all the time uh, but it actually happened on wrtc also um, they make a non-lethal weapon uh, for uh, police where was i buying it i was buying it on one of these spikes oh was it more than 10 days ago i don't even know anymore all these days blend in i was buying it right here on this initial spike um, when they won uh, one contract and it didn't really spike as much as I thought and it came down and I was a little disappointed. Um, I think I did this during a live webinar. I was giving like an all day live webinar and this one was one of the ones that popped up and I sold it. I remember I sold it at 719. And again, it's choppy. You know, I didn't miss much, but I don't do well with choppy stocks. Like you got to be honest with yourself. What are you best at and what are you worst at? SOLO looks like it could break out. I don't want to chase it now. Um, it's very choppy here. I'm sure, you know, the promoters are going wild, hyping it up. This is another thing. A lot of these stocks are, are promoted. Like, so I actually had a small loss on IDEX today um, because I'm, I'm just not great with, you know, promoted stocks and choppy stocks. I was buying it on this uh, morning spike and I, I got caught in this one red candle. There was only one red candle, the biggest red candle of the day, and I was in it. Um, and then, you know, it kept going. So I underestimated it. It's okay to sell too soon. It's okay to exit. Um, you know, when it broke the day high and, you know, the, the company is coming out swinging against the short sellers, I was like, well, maybe this can run. Um, and it broke the day high. And, you know, I guess I chased it a little bit. I mean, the day high here was at 185 and I was in 
um, you know, in the uh, low 190s. So that was, or high 180s, low 190s. I had a few different executions, but I wasn't there like, you know, right at the breakout level 185. And again, this is another thing like where these stocks don't have perfect uh, technical analysis. I hear these people where someone's like, oh, you're just teaching basic technical analysis. I can learn that from anybody. If you use basic technical analysis on these plays, you're going to get destroyed. Um, I just didn't want to, you know, get really stuck because again, like with me, um, I have it a little harder than you because I'm, I'm teaching about these stocks. And because I talk to so many traders and pretty much everyone knows my, you know, strategy rule number one, cutting losses quickly. Um, if I'm in a promoted stock, the promoters can just take it for a few minutes because they know that I'm going to follow my rule number one and cut losses quickly, which is what I think probably happened here. Um, which is fine. You know, I, 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 I like every opportunity to show off my rules. Um, you have to understand, I mean, this is part of the reason why I, you know, donate all of the profits to charity. I want a chance uh, to really show you why the rules matter so much. Obviously, I want to donate as much as possible to charity. Um, you know, and these, these charities are going to get a nice fat uh, $270,000 check so far for this month. We'll see what the, the next few days hold. Um, but again, I, I want to do the best, but it doesn't like personally hurt me. Like these promoters think like, oh, let's, let's bag Sykes. I saw a few messages. Like you're not hurting me because then I just get to show off my rule. And frankly, I mean, it's good to cut losses quickly. I wouldn't have this any other way. Um, but I am glad that some people had more patience. And, you know, again, you have it easier than me. Okay. When I'm always saying study hard, like, yeah, you have to study a lot in the beginning, but by year three, four, five, like, this is easy. This is just rinse and repeat. This is not rocket science. Um, so congrats to everyone who understands that you have it easier than me and it gets easier over time, but you have to take it seriously in the beginning. Got to give props to a few students. Ono uh, made like, uh, what, nearly 10% on IDEX. Um, here is uh, Off uh, made like 10%, 200 bucks. That's pretty good. Uh, Greg was in and out on WKHS. That was the big winner. Nice 14%. Um, and Luis uh, taking a single uh, on WKHS. Um, and then also Demi, uh 10% on SGBX. And, you know, some people say, like, why do you highlight these students where they make $100 or $200? Like, that's not trading. Like, yes, it is. Like, that's small account trading. That's fine. And it's good to take $100, $200 uh, bucks at a time. I don't want you going for home runs. I can't tell you how many people sent me messages to buy BHTG because it was spiking in the morning. And, you know, it was up so much. And I was like, I actually said this in the chat room. I was like, I would not chase this. This does not have a good history of spiking. Um, you know, a lot of promoters were pushing it and they were trying to hype it up and trying to turn it into something. And it just, it just wasn't, you know, fetch was not going to happen. Um, so it kind of triple topped or more, you know, double topped during market hours. Um, and congrats to shorts. You know, I, I saw a few uh, people who shorted this. Uh, Tim Lento for one, and I think he was shorting in the high threes and covering in the high twos, you know, making a dollar a share on the short side. So um, you just have to be careful. Like I am, I'm not uh, the most aggressive trader, but when I can make, you know, two grand in a morning or even 270,000 in a month, um, I hope you understand like how far this stuff can go. Uh, but you do have to be careful. You can't just chase, you can't just hold on all these stocks. TMXN, one last little lesson here. Um, you know, this was the same promoter as DLOC, which was a great, you know, 4,000% winner in one day. And then it kept going the next day. Um, and they put out a press release and they were probably in on it together. I don't know. Um, but there, he also had a GAHC. Let me just show you in case you guys haven't been following all the pumps as closely as you should. Um, this was DLOC from I alerted it and, you know, I was piggybacking the pump here at one and a half and I sold it at three and went to 19 that day and 30 cents the next day, but now it's coming back down. Um, and then GAHC was the guy's next pump. And this one, like, it doesn't look like it lasted, but it lasted a little bit enough to have a solid profit. And then today, TMXN, um, literally like you, you had to be so quick. It was all in one minute. And I tried to buy the dip and I was fortunate enough just to get out with a small profit because, um, you know, it, it was just one spike. And you have to expect this out of the promoters, um, you know, just like these stocks, a lot of these pumps are like kind of like bouncing balls where each bounce is a little lower. 
um, with these promoters and these pumps, you know, each pump is a little less and less uh, as people start to realize, you know, what's up. Like you can't just say these companies have good <laughs> fundamentals because they don't. Um, and I really wouldn't encourage you to hold and hope. I know some people are like, come on, Tim, give it time. Um, I would be down 50, 60% on my, uh, you know, quote investment if I was still holding this a few hours later. Um, you know, I made like 90 bucks and I'm, I'm very glad, you know, I didn't chase it. It hit two cents a share. I didn't want to chase it. I got it on a massive 50% dip and now it would be even a bigger dip because now it's 75% off its pump highs. So, um, while I might sell plays like ALYI a little too cautiously, I might sell plays like SOLO, which is breaking out, um, a little too cautiously. Um, it's because of plays like TMXN that I've seen. So uh, you just don't know 100% you know, which ones are actually going to make it and which ones are just going to crack. And even the ones that are going to make it, like SOLO and ALYI, they're just very choppy. So I, don't, I really don't mind uh, you know, exiting too soon, 2K a day keeps the real job away and I'm protecting my massive month. Um, you know, you'll see, I mean, this is just human nature, but you'll see like the more your money grows on any given day or any week or any month, you know, you start going into protection mode. Um, like I've already proven what my strategy can do. And also it's not just, you know, me versus me. It's also me versus the market. The market isn't, um, having, you know, the biggest spikes right now, like these, these individual names, like, yeah, SOLO, I mean, is breaking out, but it's a 35% spike, you know, like a few days ago, a few weeks ago, a 35% spike would happen like that. Like it would be much quicker. Um, now you're getting a lot of these, these energy, uh, stocks and electric charging like BLNK was running too. And, you know, I had this one a few days ago and it just didn't do much. And now even today, like you had the nice spike and now it's holding on to like a 20% gain. So um, you also have to adapt to the market. And this is why I say that, you know, the, the market is a moving target and, you know, getting your, your head straight is a moving target too. There's two different moving targets and that's what makes trading difficult for newbies because they don't realize that the moving target, you know, is all over the place. They think, oh, let me just buy a thousand shares of every company and everything is exact. Nothing is exact here, okay? And the reason why I told you in the beginning of this video to say, um, to type out a comment underneath this video saying it's a process, because it is. It's a process of uh, learning to adapt to the market and learning to adapt to yourself. And we're all a little different. You know, we're all trading the same kinds of stocks, the same market, but guess what? I saw some students who like shorting BLNK into this ridiculous run up from three and a half to four and a half. And I saw, you know, one or two challenge students short this first big crack here. I think they shorted like two or 3,000 shares each at 440-ish, 430-ish, and they were covering here at four-ish and they're making their 10%. I would be very careful if I was a short seller. I know many short sellers who were getting absolutely destroyed. Um, you know, many short sellers out there who like, who like to promote that like, short selling is so great. I say that short sellers are the new promoters, or at least they were until, uh, you know, StockTwits, Discord, WhatsApp, and Telegram pumpers started actually becoming pumpers again. Uh, but short squeezes are happening all over the place, and a lot of the biggest short sellers are not talking about that risk. And unfortunately, it's the newbies, um, you know, who suffer the, the brunt of those squeezes. And then they just don't understand what they did wrong. Um, they learn to hate penny stocks. They say, screw short selling. And it's neither of those faults. I mean, it's it's the fault of lack of preparation. I know a lot of newbie shorts where they're like, come on, Tim, I don't want to watch all your videos. I'm just going to short anything that's up. And on plays like BLNK, okay, it would work. And you make your 10%. But when you're wrong, at least in the past few weeks, you know, you would lose 50, 100, 200, 300% of your money. Um, I know some shorts who are still stuck in CYDY. Um, be very careful. I was buying this in the threes. My last sale, I think, was right here in the 390s, um, but I made money on it, and you know, I, I definitely underestimated it. Now I'm waiting for a morning panic, but I would not be short this. Like, you got to be kidding me to go against such a gradually uptrending company. I don't care if it's the biggest scam in the world. I don't care what you think about it. You don't put yourself in that position, but a lot of short sellers do, and there's only so much I can do to help You know, when you break rules, when you ignore risks. Um, that's what's going to happen. So for me, I am not thrilled about today. 
Um, but I'm, you know, I'm happy to make two grand in a day. Like I, my head hasn't gotten so big as to forget that two grand in a day is, is pretty good. Um, and I'll just keep taking it trade by trade. These videos also help me, um, because, you know, even though I've been trading 20 plus years, it's good to verbalize what I'm thinking and, you know, to get feedback on it. So leave a comment, let me know. Um, and also if you're profiting good, if you're not profiting, it's okay. Leave a comment underneath saying it is a process and you're just trying to learn and get better every day. I'll see you guys in the chat room. Thanks again.